Okay, so let's maybe adjust the camera down so that the actually easier to move the page up and zoom in. And um, looks like we're set at 10 walkers. You want to? I'll well, leave it at 10. All right. Okay, and then our options here are related to this exponent that is going to determine uh, something about the pattern, but I'll let you discover that by playing it. So go ahead and run it now with 10. And what do you notice here? And tell me some things that you see that are different about what you saw before. Well, here, there's no limit to the jump size. Like we had one here that jumped all the way down off the page, it looks like. And uh, as we get bigger, I guess the probability that you jump huge distances like these gets bigger and bigger until something finally does it. Um, yeah, that's actually not true. The the jump size, as you're zooming out, the the potential jump sizes don't change. So what made what made you think that as you zoomed out, the jump sizes got larger? Well, when we were all in like this little area, nothing was jumping around hugely. But then as we zoomed out, like we got this one that jumped all the way down here. Okay, so let's maybe hide path. I think it's all, it also gives you the points that they go to. Uh, hide position. I just want to see the red dots. There they are. Okay, so there's there's when when we start. Mm-hmm. So what do you think's going on here? Well, it just kind of, it looks like they just jump around a bit before they get a prob the probability before they get to um jump a big distance and they kind of just jump off the page. Okay. So what's different about this than uh, than the one you saw before? Here it is. Well, it's much bucks. more spread out, I think. Okay. And I guess it doesn't. I guess they don't kind of stay in one area. They kind of jump around much more because the, the jump sizes are bigger than the last one we saw. All right, I'll try the exponent. Let's go all the way to the end and try three there. Let's see what see what you see is different about this one. It's faster. But they also are, they're also staying closer together. Okay, so with the exponent of three, does this remind you of anything? This looks like our previous random walk examples. Okay, so go back to one or one point two five or something. Still one. Okay. See about one point two five or something different. All right. Since they they're jumping around, like they just kind of. Yeah, so here, I can, if I can show you the, when we put the paths back on, you can see here the large jump. So what do you think is something that might be modeled by this? Hmm, well, can just, it says up here that physics and ecology, things in physics and ecology, but I'm not too familiar with systems in physics. Well, what's different about this one than the, than the, the prior one, where you said it looked like... Like, what are you seeing here that you weren't seeing before in, oh. in your, like, sort of, like, let's call it a dust particle moving through the air? We see massive jumps from position to position. Okay. It, it's almost like it's just teleporting around to different parts of the square. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. So it'd be like if a dust particle moving through the air suddenly, like, teleported or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, we have a cat walking by, so there might be something that comes across the screen. Um, but maybe not teleporting. Well, this could be like if you if you just you released. Maybe I'll just go with and make an ecology example. If you released a bunch of tadpoles at a point and watched how they swam around. Oh, okay. Well, which one? Which one of the two cases do you think a bunch of tadpoles being released oh, swimming around would be? That's probably going to be our first case. Okay. This, well, they're not apt to, they don't just suddenly travel different distances like this. It would be a bit more uniform. Okay. So I'm not really sure what would travel just these vastly differing distances. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this, is real, this is a really interesting situation where it is actually fairly difficult to come up with 
examples because you're so used to seeing the other kind of example. Mm -hmm. Uh, where things sort of, you know, in small time intervals, they move very slowly. Uh, but there are famous examples of things like this. One, uh, one famous one, which doesn't involve moving, but at least it'll demonstrate the gap jumps, is the difference between height and wealth. So if you had a thousand people in a room and you introduced the tallest person in the world to that room, Mm -hmm. The average height, would that change by a lot or a little, do you think? A little. I mean, the tallest person in the room is only... The tallest person in the world. Ta well, the tallest person of all time was 8 foot 11. Okay. So, even call that 9 feet, that's 3 feet taller than most people, and that's... But divided that over a thousand people, and that's not going to change the height by that much. Yeah. Now, what if I had a thousand people in a room and I introduced the wealthiest person in the world into that room? Would the average wealth change by a lot or a little? It would change by more than the height would change. Yeah. I think it would still change by quite a lot. Yeah, how come? Well, I'm not, I don't know what the average wealth of a person is, but the richest person in the world is, has like $70 billion. Uh -huh. and divide that over a thousand, that's still quite a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, it changed by a lot. So that, that's an example of the kind of thing you see here, where something gets introduced, one thing, a single thing gets introduced, and the whole thing changes drastically. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of situation you're seeing here. But it's really interesting. <coughs> These are fun programs to explore that kind of situation. All right, good job.